So I have this old saw. It's supposed to be a portable lumber mill, like you, you hold it on a log and move it along the log. I got it for free. I've used it a few times and I'm, this morning I was like, I'm never using this thing again. It's just, it's no good. So I started dismantling it to just take all the pieces. I started thinking, I bet I could build a pretty nice vertical bandsaw with this thing. You know what else I've got? <laughs> okay, right here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. This has just been, it's one of those things that I collected and it's just been sitting here forever. It's part of a table saw that didn't have the saw or anything. It's just the, the tabley part. I wonder if I could build it into this. Like it's got, it's got the tabletop. It's got a bunch of jars and crap on it. But it's a pretty good size. It looks like about the right size for this thing. Well, since it's a pouring rain day and it's, there's thunder and lightning outside, I'm not going to do what I was going to do today. So maybe this is it. Okay, the first problem I see with doing this is this. Here, back, up, back up a little. Can I zoom out here? No, that's full zoom. Okay. The motor's at this end, so this is the big heavy end. And this runs off an electric chainsaw, which is funny. Like, you're supposed to buy this thing and then attach an electric chainsaw on it to, to power it. Now, the blade goes... goes this way. So if I want to have the motor at the bottom, the blade's coming down here, that means this would be the cutting side. But I don't want this to be the cutting side because it's the side with all the, all the strength. I want that to be the cutting side because I only have one piece to take off here. Because around the blade, I'm going to have to remove everything so that, well, let's turn it the way it's going to be. Because um, I just want the blade coming down where I'm going to be cutting stuff, right? And, you know, I'll, have a, I'll make some kind of blade guard thing that comes down or whatever. I don't know. That's, that's not important right now. So basically the blade's going the wrong way. I want the blade to go this way. And I'm pretty sure that chainsaw does not have a reverse on it. And I also don't know exactly how these wheels keep the blade on if they could do it both directions. It probably would probably be fine. You know, I'm just gonna presume, well, I'm gonna cut at this end anyway. Even if I have to put the motor, like even if, even if I have to put the thing this way, put the motor up at the top, which would be stupid because then all the weight would be up in the air and not down and I have to put extra weight at the bottom to keep it from tipping over. But either way, this is gonna be the cutting side. So let me take off everything around the blade down here and just see how sturdy it is with just these pieces holding it in shape. And of course I can, you know, always add stuff here. I do currently have this bandsaw. So this is, this is basically what I want to make. Um, this is a really small one. It also doesn't... It's all right. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's only like 120 bucks. Like it's, it's decent for the money I paid for it, but it can't handle a lot of stuff and it doesn't cut straight very well. You know, um, yeah, getting a, getting a nice bandsaw would be really nice. I wouldn't necessarily replace this one. Maybe I'll let the kids use this one, but yeah. I did score a super nice one of these a while ago. That was sweet. Oh, it does need a few repairs and stuff. But anyway, let's get back to this band. Okay, so I better just remember everything I took apart. There it goes there, and this goes here. Now this piece here is the tensioner for that wheel to make the to make the blade tight. We have to excuse the lighting. It's so dark outside right now because there's a storm. Um, and there's a bolt that goes in through here into here. So this pulls, pivots here, and pushes the wheel out. So that's what puts tension on that wheel to keep the blade tight. So I want all that intact. Um, yeah, I want to want to get this thing off. So let's see. How that... Oh, you know what? I also want this stupid thing out of the way. This is. This is the blade guard, which I won't need for the for what I'm gonna do with this. Oh god, how's it how's it even attached? 
All right, let's get that blade out of there. Yeah, that was a broken one anyway. I have a whole bunch of these blades that came with this thing. All right, now this thing. It's, oh, you know what this is? This isn't even like really supposed to support much. This is the thing that sets your cut height. So I don't think I'm really losing much stability by taking this off completely. All right, with that bottom section out of the way, it still feels pretty sturdy. I think sufficient for my purpose. All right, so the blade comes through here and then goes through this little guide. And this bearing here uh, rests along the back of the blade to keep the blade from, you know, going that way. And that bearing looks pretty good. It's, it's got the same thing at the other end, so, oh wow. That should not spin so freely. That means there's no oil grease left in that bearing. So this bearing, see it doesn't spin freely like that. Like it stops pretty quickly. It's because it's got grease inside it. Now the grease will slow it down at a low speed, but when it, when it speeds up, the grease will lubricate it and keep it from getting too hot. This one though, with no grease, spins very freely with like no force on it. But if it gets a lot of force on it, it's gonna heat up. So I'm gonna have to get some grease into that. Now, because it's got this same, yeah, it looks like it's got the exact same setup here. It doesn't, it doesn't matter which direction the blade is going. So I could reverse the blade and have it going the direction I want. There is something that I will have to change though. Okay, right here is a thing that scrapes against the wheel. Ah, this one doesn't move. Uh, okay, here's, here's one on this side. This scrapes against the wheel when it's in the right spot and keeps any sawdust from building up on the wheel. Because you don't want sawdust building up on the wheel because it'll go in, around here and then it'll get under the blade and it, it could screw things up. So this keeps any sawdust from building up. But if I turn this the other direction, if I want to reverse the direction of the wheels, then this won't work. So I'll have to take this off and I don't know, attach it somewhere up here, facing the other opposite direction. This one, I mean, I could just leave it in the same spot, take off the bolt. And if this is symmetrical, I'll just flip it over and have it aim the other way. Now the downside of that is as it's coming around the sawdust would would get poof, like pushed off but then it could you know have momentum and fall back down in there so I just have to well, I just put something to block it. No, I don't think I can figure that out. It's not too too big of a problem. So there's nothing it looks like there's nothing around here that would prevent me from reversing the direction of the blade, which would be nice because I don't want to put the motor at the top. I definitely want to put the motor at the bottom. Is that it? No. Oh, it is. This is like the laziest engineering I've ever seen. Spring pins? Is that what these things are called? These things. You can see those, right? <laughs> they just jammed those in there and doubled them up. <laughs> Whoa, that's good enough. Oh, what a bunch of goons. And what fits on this is this thing here. So this is not, this is obviously not the, the sprocket that drives a chainsaw chain. Um, it's been replaced by this thing. But if I get a sprocket from another chainsaw, I can put it on here, get a bar, turn this back into a chainsaw. I bet it's pretty nice. Anyway, I could mount this on another motor, stick it in here, and then run this thing. Yeah, so that thing back there turns this gear, which turns that one, makes the whole thing go. What's the gear ratio here? 
Okay, this has nine teeth, and then this has... I can't count under here, but it looks like it's about 18 from here to there. So the ratio of this to that is one to two, and there's six of those. So about one to 12 total. Now, I'm curious what the ratio is on my other bandsaw. Oh, Jamie, you need to get the vacuum cleaner out here. I know, I know, I know. Oh, wow. This one is like, it's like one to two, maybe. You can actually see the sprocket, but it's not maybe double that one. Huh. This thing works pretty well. So, yeah, one to 12 is plenty. So this is one to 12, plus the chainsaw has its own internal gearing, which is, I don't know, one to six or something like that. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's also geared down between the motor and this thing here. So I think I can connect the motor directly to this. It'll be geared down one to 12, which is still way more geared down than my other bandsaw over, over there, which seems to work totally fine. And the reason this is geared down so much is because it's made to cut really wide things you know like like cutting full boards on a out of a log of course if i'm going to turn it into a vertical bandsaw i'm never going to be putting like a giant piece of wood through it you know it'll be like smaller things so yeah it should be should be fine well here's a pretty serious motor <laughs> i think this is probably overkill uh oh crap what is it 750 watts is that right? Okay, that's not too crazy. Uh, so it's only half the power of that thing. I'm finding that hard to believe, but whatever. Uh, still, I think this will be plenty of power for this thing. Now, the nice thing about this motor is that I can power it from the same power source as my lumber mill. So I could set up this fancy bandsaw up at my lumber mill. I think I'm doing it. I'm not sure how to mount that motor though. Hold on, here we go. Sort of looking for. That might help. Okay, so the thing with the motor is I want to I want to mount it on here perpendicular and have it really like as as straight onto this as possible. Because a tiny bit of wiggle isn't gonna be a big problem. But if this is kind of like crooked, this is exaggeration, of course. But if it's crooked it's gonna start creating a lot of heat and you know it'll wear everything out in here and be a problem. So I wanna keep it straight, like as perpendicular to this as possible. So I'll bolt this on there. Then I can, you know, have to have some kind of spacers of a known a known length to attach. I can bolt right into this. Okay. I I think I got it. You know, something didn't quite feel right when this wheel was turning. And uh, I don't know if you can hear that. But uh, there's no grease inside these bearings. At least one of them, anyway. I'll have to open them both up and stuff grease into them. can see the wheels in there. They're not greased at all. This is a tube of lithium grease. Barehanded. Get in there. Oops. Don't want to lose my little cover. Still a little bit rough, but I'm gonna give it the uh, good enough stamp of approval. 
And this thing has kind of a weird shaped hole, so. is on there all right if I remember right the hole in the middle of here is threaded so I should be able to put a bolt on there to keep that in place not that it's moving I hammered it on it's pretty tough cleaning up those threads a little bit in there okay that should hold that sucker in place all right mister uh, imperial noodle units. Okay, that is three and three eighths imperial noodle units. And oh, what are the chances I got that on the first try? These are a tiny bit snug, but totally within acceptable parameters. Oh, that one's nice and loose. These two are snug. All right, that's a nice big surface to use for attachments. Goes right there. Ooh, did I get it lined up? I think I did. Okay, how do I get that? <laughs> Bolt something between this and that. I cannot believe I found pieces that actually fit in here. Well, it was one piece I cut it in half. Well, I did have to flip this piece over and do a tiny bit of filing. And then it fits so well. I just found these in a sh on a shelf over there. Amongst my stuff, my scrap stuff. I'm always collecting scrap stuff. Why? Because when I need some obscure piece of stuff, to fit some spot perfectly, poof, there it is. Ah, so awesome. Oh man, that looks great. Oh, so good. All right, a couple more screws through there and there. All right, these are the two bolts I've got in there so far. They should not be in the way. The blade comes through here. Actually, I mean, it's below here, but even if it was hitting there, the uh, blade guide is taller than it anyway, so nothing's hitting that. This one, there's nothing near that. And I want to put two more over here. I can definitely get one in here because there's space behind there. Yeah, that won't hit. And over here, I think I get one right in there. Nice. Oh, that's, <laughs> this is working out. At this point, I should be able to turn this on, and this battery is not the right voltage, so this is going to be way underpowered, but I think it'll be, it'll be enough power to make it go at least. The gear runs a little noisy, but uh, yeah, the blade's on track where it should be. I did adjust the thing to where I thought it should be, so 
Let me get a little piece of wood here. I'm only detecting a minor issue at the moment. On this side, the blade looks great. It's pretty much in the middle of the thing. And you know, I adjusted it and was turning it by my hand until I got it to the right spot. So this, this side looks great. If I go to the other side, the blade is kind of way, way over to this side. It's like way over here. I want it more in the middle. Although at the moment it does totally work. I just think it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard on, on the guides for the blade coming out of here if the blade is not centered, because when it gets to the guides here, they're gonna to have to push it forward, so it's gonna put a lot of pressure on them. But as the blade comes across here, since there's nothing, you know, between this whole area, kind of pushing the blade in any particular direction, it would be really easy, it wouldn't take much force to just nudge it a tiny bit this way and get it to, to ride on the, the pulley in the center. Wait a minute. Tracking adjustment bolt. There is tracking adjustment at this end. All right. Well, it looks like it's shoved all the way to one end. Yeah, I gotta fix that. All right. Okay, after a closer inspection and doing some adjustments, the tracking adjustment was all the way to one side because that's the direction that tries to pull the blade in the direction it needs to go. And it's maxed out and the blade is still too far on the other side, so maybe I should just put a, a bearing in here to you know give it a bit of help. Well, let's check what's in my box of weird bearings. Okay, way too huge. Hmm. Maybe after kind of examining everything, I think this is the best way to do this. This bearing is a pretty thick walled bearing, so it shouldn't wear out anytime soon. Right now I'm just tapping the holes into this because I can't get a nut inside there. Ha! <laughs> and most of the safety guard still fits. Just cut out a little chunk for the bearing. Oh, we still got three lights. Sweet! It's not even using that much energy. Of course, this runs on a much higher voltage than that little battery, so it'll have a lot more power. But even on that, man, that thing runs great. Man, that is sounding way better than I've ever heard it before. I'm thinking whoever had it before bent something, or I don't know, I don't know. Either way, that just cut through that wood so nice, so easily. And I bet I could cut boards out of logs with this thing. I, I'm thinking at some point I'm going to connect this to my lumber mill that's up on the hill. It runs on the same power, so I can just take the wires off that, connect them right to this motor. And up there I've got a big track and a big carriage. I could just bolt this right to the carriage. I wouldn't even have to... Yeah, I could just... I, I don't even have to bolt it. I could just clamp it on there with a few clamps and run it through some logs and cut some boards. So I bet I'm gonna end up doing that at some point. So I think when I turn this into a bandsaw, like a, like a vertical bandsaw going this way, the table here, you know, table legs down, I'm thinking I'm gonna make it so it's easy to de detach in case I wanna do something else with it. All right, 
Now what, what do I have to do to get that into this? And uh, oh wow, it's dinner time. Oh man, I did not realize it was that late. Um, I better go make some food. Oh wow, we got rain and thunder again today. Well, at least my buckets are filling up. I guess I'm working on this again. All right, where are we? I'm not sure if I'll use that part. I do want to keep this thing. However, it's got rusty screws, bolts, and nuts, so I want to replace those. I don't want this rusty crap. Hey, focus. Still not sure how I'm gonna connect this thing. So I'm just making some attachment points by re-threading the original attachment points to fit the bolts that I have. Okay, I think I got it. This piece bolts on the end here, right? So I'm gonna take this, mount it on here, and I'll attach it on the back somewhere. Like to here and some stuff back there. I'm not gonna attach it to the front here because taking this piece off is how you change the blade and I don't wanna get in the way of that if I don't have to. And then, yeah, once this is on there, then I just bolt it right onto here. Piece of cake. And then I cut a slot out here so that I can get this into the blade. And then I put a piece on here. Well, when I did, when I bolted this piece on here to cover the slot, I was thinking this was gonna be at this side, but since it's gonna be out here, I have to take this off and put it on, off on the side. So it's, cause it's gonna be in the way of cutting stuff. So yeah, I'll just take this off, put it on the side. Okay. I don't want this flexing up and down. That's actually pretty sturdy. But I'm gonna attach something from here down to there. I'll make it real stiff. Nice. Much better. Oh, okay, how's this going here? I hope it fits. Yep, yep, yep. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Oh man, that is almost a bandsaw. <laughs> okay, now I just need something connected at this end to keep it from moving up and down. Yeah. Well, the table can still move that, that way a little bit. So, can I attach this to there somehow? Or, let me think. Oh, if this silly thing was longer, I could bolt through it into this. <sighs> All right. I think I might need to take this off and make an, a longer one. That's better. Oh, nice. Oh, that's great. Okay. Now we need some kind of legs on this thing. Yeah, that's not gonna. Oh, you know what? If I take this piece out and replace it with the piece that I took out of here, that could then be one of the legs. There, a bit of support for the motor. Not that it needs it, the motor's not moving anyway. Well, that's it. That should totally work. Well, I guess I better test it. All right, little battery. Give me a minute of power.
Oh, I'll definitely want to put something in this space here. Uh, but anytime I'm cutting anything big, that's not going to matter. So, ah, we'll just worry about that later. Oh, I did. No, I think I want something a little, a little more heavy duty than that. Man, that is going to go a lot faster when I get a 24 volt power supply on it. And I have four of those. My house is 24 volts. Well, it also has an inverter for like 110, but the main power is 24 volts. Both my boats outside are 24 volts, and then the lumber mill also runs on 24 volts. So I can, I can run this thing full power in any of those places. And that's cool that I can run it on either boat. So I could, I could put it on a boat, take it somewhere, and then cut stuff just with the boat power. Cool. Good thinking, Jamie. All right, Jamie, clean up. Oh, oh, it will be good to get the metal bits out of my feet. Yeah. All right, floor's looking good. What else do I need to clean up, Pete? Oh, All right, me. a new shirt which is totally dry well I didn't make the shirt I just painted it oh yeah oh that's a good looking one right there I like it <laughs> 